In today's class, we will be discussing about pressure half time in echocardiography. Pressure half time denotes the time required for the peak pressure gradient to be reduced to one half. So, in exa for example, if the peak pressure is 14 millimeters of mercury, we will find out the time required for 14 millimeters to become 7 mm. But in Doppler, we measure velocity. So, we have to find out how velocity and pressure are related. So, as per Bernoulli's equation, P is equal to 4 into velocity square. That is, peak pressure gradient is equal to 4 into velocity square. So, when we make uh, take uh, to find out the pressure uh, gradient, that is the pressure half time from the velocity uh, and to find out pressure half time and uh, when we apply the Bernoulli's equation, P is equal to 4 into V square, we will derive that pressure half time is the time required for the peak velocity to become peak velocity by the square root of 2, that is peak velocity by 1.4 that will be equivalent to 0.7 into velocity that is pressure half time uh, refers to the time required for the velocity peak velocity to become 0.7 of the peak velocity so we change pressure gradient to velocity because in Doppler we measure velocity and the relationship between pressure and velocity as per Bernoulli's equation is P is equal to 4 into V square so, pressure half time is significant in mitral stenosis, diastolic events, in, that is in mitral stenosis and aortic regurgitation. So, uh, in mitral stenosis, we, we plot the LA and the LV pressures and the area under the LA LV pressure uh, uh, will uh, give us the trace in, uh, in mitral stenosis. And the time required for V max to become V max by, by the uh, divided by square root of 2 will denote pressure half time. So from this diagram which is given here, it, it is clear that as the severity of mitral stenosis increases, the area under the curve also increases and also the pressure half time increases. Here the pressure half time is uh, this, this much. While in the second diagram where it, there is severe mitral stenosis, the pressure half time has increased. So as the severity of mitral stenosis increases, pressure half time increases. So this we can make out that here the LA pressure has to rise so much then only the blood uh, can be pushed from the left atrium into the uh, left ventricle. So as the severity of the mitral stenosis increases, the LA pressure will curve will rise up and the area under the curve will increases in the uh, in continuous uh, pulse wave Doppler. So mitral stenosis pressure half time is a measure of severity and as the stenosis in worsens pressure half time increases. So another important use of pressure half time is mitral valve area can be calculated that is equivalent to 220 divided by pressure half time. So there are several advantages of pressure half time. That is, it is a me better measure of severity than the peak pressure gradient and it is because it is less dependent on heart rate and flow across the stenotic valve and it is also useful in atrial fibrillation because uh, as the RR interval changes in atrial fibrillation, the peak pressure gradient which will be measured across the valve will vary as per each heart rate, as per each beat but pressure half time remains the same so it is very useful in atrial fibrillation. But there are few limitations of pressure half time because in conditions like the di altered diastolic compliance like left ventricular hypertrophy it will alter the flow velocity and hence pressure half time can be falsely increased. So what happens in uh, if there is a mitral stenosis plus aortic regurgitation. So there is a stenosis so there is a longer time it will take uh, for the uh, the V max to become V max by square 2 and also there is regurgitation in diastole. So the LV is getting filled up from the across the stenotic mitral valve and also from by the regurgitant flow across the aortic valve. So the LV diastolic pressure rise quickly. So what it will uh, result is LV pressure rise quickly means we get a shorter area, uh, curve under the LA and the LV. 
and this will result in shortening your pressure half time and it will result in an underestimation of mitral stenosis severity. So if there is an AR with an MS, the PHT will be shortened and that will result in an underestimation of mitral stenosis severity. And also pressure half time measurement is inaccurate up to 48 to 72 hours after a balloon mitral valvuloplasty. So if a patient has undergone balloon mitral valvuloplasty, it is better not to assess the valve function with the pressure half time for the first 24, 48 to 72 hours. So what happens to pressure half time in aortic regurgitation? It is just the opposite in mitral stenosis. Here as the length pressure half time increases, the severity of aortic regurgitation decreases. So here we will be plotting the aortic pressure and the LV pressure and the area under that curve will be the uh, trace. And as uh, uh, so in uh, aortic regurgitation, as the aortic pressure quickly, um, that is the steeper the slope of the aortic regurgitation uh, flow profile. So this is the aortic regurgitation flow, flow, flow profile and this is another flow profile. Here we can see that in severe AR this is steeper compared to the mild AR curve. So when it is steeper, uh, the pressure half time will be shorter. So as the severity of aortic regurgitation increases, the pressure half time reduces. That is more quickly the left ventricular and aortic uh, pressure curves approach each other. That is here it is uh, not approached, uh, it is, there is so much deviation between the LV curve and the aortic curve. While here it has reached almost close nearby. So as a as it quickly reaches, uh, the, uh, the pressure half time will be shorter and the aortic regurgitation severity will be more. So as aortic regurgitation worsens, left ventricular pressure increases more quickly, aortic pressure decreases more quickly and pressure half time shortens. So uh, pressure half time in aortic regurgitation is affected also by whether it is an acute AR or a chronic AR. So in acute AR, there will be an acute increase in LV EDP in a normal sized LV and there will be short pressure half time. So it will not be able to accommodate uh, uh, the increase in the end diastolic volume and there will be a uh, increase in left ventricular end diastolic pressure. While in chronic aortic regurgitation, there will be a compliant LV which can accommodate a left ventricular end diastolic volume, increased L di end diastolic volume and hence an increase in a left ventricular and diastolic pressure and there we get a long pressure half time. So pressure half time in short take home is in mitral stenosis longer pressure half time means more severe while in aortic regurgitation shorter pressure half time means more severe. Thank you.